The sixth theme of the course will uh, focus on the model specification issues. Uh, we will discuss some uh, practical lessons on uh, modeling strategies, uh, but I'll first start with the, with the specification testing using the F-test. And I'll start with the application of F-test on uh, to test joint significance of the regression model. So this is one of the items in the typical uh, regression output that we haven't really considered far, so far. And uh, in the next lesson, I will then apply it to the, to the hypothesis testing on, uh, on some uh, parameter restrictions. So what do we mean by joint significance? So, so far we have, uh, we have considered three alternative uh, tests for testing the significance of uh, parameters beta uh, individually. So we can apply t-test or p-value or confidence interval to test if, uh, if uh, a single parameter beta is, is uh, significant or not. But uh, particularly in the multiple regression context, uh, uh, we may, might see that, uh, that some of the regressors are significant while others are not. Uh, so it could be interesting to test also, is the model as a whole significant? So this is what this term joint significance uh, uh, refers to, that we will test uh, that are multiple parameters, be it jointly significant or not. And uh, as I mentioned, this is one of the uh, items in the, in the usual regression output. So this is again from, from Excel, but, uh, but similar F uh, statistic you can also find from the from the Stata output and probably also in, in many other statistical software. So I have highlighted here with the, with the red color. So you can see this uh, F statistic and the significance of F. And I'll come back to, the, to, to that a uh, little bit later, how to, how to read those, uh, those statistics. So firstly, what is the, what is the hypothesis that we are testing? So, so for the for the F test of joint significance, uh, the null hypothesis is always stated that uh, that uh, all of these uh, beta coefficients, except for the for the constant beta one, are equal to zero. So beta two, beta three, and all the way to beta k, all of them are equal to zero. So in that sense, uh, it would imply that the true model is just uh, just constant plus uh, plus error term epsilon. So, so that would mean that none of the explanatory variables have any any impact on why, in 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 uh, if if the null hypothesis is true. Then the alternative hypothesis states that at least some of them, some of the regressors have actually some impact on the on the dependent variable. So, uh, I also point out on the bottom part of the slide that uh, in the case of the single regression model, of course, this just boils down to testing significance on, of beta 2 coefficients. So, so this uh, idea of joint significance becomes only, only relevant in the case of uh, multiple regression with many explanatory variables. I come back to the connection to the single regression case uh, uh, later on this, on this video. Okay, so that's the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis. We are testing that, uh, that uh, does the model as a whole explain anything or not. So uh, now, of course, uh, it's good to remember that so far we have just uh, uh, measured the empirical fit of the model by the coefficient of determination, which we also typically abbreviate as R squared because it is uh, literally the squared value of the, the correlation coefficient in the single regression case. So as an intuition to, the, to this uh, test, uh, then obviously if the null hypothesis is true, that if none of the uh, explanatory variables x have any any real impact on the y variable, we would expect to see that the, the R squared statistic to be relatively close to zero. Of course, uh, just by accident, uh, there would be some some explanatory power with any any model, but uh, but uh, then in some sense we can think about this uh, uh, testing of joint significance as uh, as if that we are testing that is this R squared statistic significantly greater than zero. So that's in some sense an alternative interpretation for this, for this F-test of, uh, of joint significance. And this is in some sense also what I, what I referred to earlier when we introduced the R-squared statistic that, uh, that um, 
that uh, I suggested that this uh, adjusted R squared is not necessarily very useful, that, uh, that uh, uh, the classic R squared statistic has more intuitive interpretation, and uh, we can also then apply this uh, uh, F-test for joint significance if you want to test that is this R squared uh, significant or not. And we could also then apply it later if we compare alternative uh, model specifications. For example, if you want to add more explanatory variables. I'll come back to that in the next video. So how do we then apply the, the F-test? So, so um, here's first of all the test statistic. So uh, the idea with the F statistic is to is to indeed to look at this uh, empirical fit and we can apply the ANOVA decomposition. So recall from this analysis of variance that this uh, ESS was this explained sum of squares and RSS was the residual sums of squares. Uh, equivalently, we can think about it also uh, formulate the test in terms of the R squared statistic and, uh, and one minus R squared statistics. You can you can uh, see that actually uh, the the uh, both ways of formulating the F statistic are are equivalent. So if we take this R squared interpretation, then then notice that if the empirical fit is very low, then the R squared in the denominator of this ratio uh, will be relatively close to zero, whereas then this one minus R squared will be relatively large. So then this uh, F statistic will be well, will have quite small value. This F statistic will always have a, have a value greater than zero. And uh, then we also need to need to proportion it uh, R squared now to the so-called degrees of freedom that we have discussed also earlier. So uh, meaning how many observations we have, that's the N, and capital K is how many parameters there are in the model, so how many explanatory variables. Um, so uh, then we take this also into account in the F statistic. So this is exactly the reason why then this F test can also also be used to test that if adding more variables uh, increases the the fit significantly or not. Okay. So um, as I mentioned, the F, F statistic is always always uh, greater than zero. And uh, the higher the R squared statistic, in other words, a better empirical fit the model has, then the bigger this F statistic will be. So we are essentially testing that uh, that uh, is this uh, empirical fit of the model just uh, coincidental, or, or is it is it larger than would occur if uh, if there was in in reality no no connection whatsoever between this uh, x and y variables. So we compare the test statistic to the to the critical value of the corresponding f distribution so the f distribution is something that we haven't used so far in the in the in this course so the f distribution also has this uh, uh, also has two degrees of freedom which are specified here as as uh, k minus 1 so it's uh, it's the number of parameters minus 1 and n minus k which is the number of observations minus number of parameters so these are the two arguments for the for the f distribution. So to get the critical values of the of the f distribution, then of course we also need to specify the significance level. So usually we would use again this five percent significance or perhaps one percent significance level. And uh, uh, the traditional approach is to then resort to the statistical tables of the of the f distribution. But uh, perhaps nowadays a simpler way is just to use uh, use uh, uh, this f in function in Excel, so you can get directly the critical value with this f in function that uh, that I have stated here with the green color. So there, as the arguments of the f in uh, uh, function, you need to need to state the probability, which is the significance level, for example, five percent, and then then you put these degrees of freedom. So the first one is this k minus 1, and second one is n minus k. So with those information, Excel calculates you the, the critical value of the, of the f distribution. So here's some, some uh, graphical illustration of how the f distribution uh, would look like with a different, uh, different parameter values. So it is uh, typically kind of 
skewed asymmetric uh, distribution. It doesn't have negative values. And, uh, and then, of course, uh, the critical values we take from the, from the right tail of the, of the distribution, where there will be, in some sense, the cumulative distribution function of the F distribution has, uh, has, the, uh, has the value of 0 0.95 or 0 0.99. So uh, here's also some, some illustration of how the, how the uh, critical value of the F distribution depends on the sample size. So I have here uh, restricted to the, to the case of um, single regression. So the first degree of uh, uh, freedom is just one. And I, I have, have constant level of 5% significance level. And I, I have adjusted here the sample size. So notice that the critical value of the F distribution starts to decrease, of course, when the sample size increases, but uh, it's somewhere approximately uh, close to the value of four. So if you want to have some kind of um, feeling of uh, what kind of critical value for the F statistic you, you would need to have in order to reject the null hypothesis, then something around four would be kind of, kind of a safe, uh, safe guess. Of course, it gets smaller when when the sample size is, is large. So then, then uh, how do we how do we apply then then I, I go back to the to this example. So when you have run run the regression, so here of course uh, uh, Excel or Stata would report you this uh, this uh, test statistic f. Uh, so uh, so that would be one hundred and forty three. And then this 143, you need to compare to the critical value of the F distribution. Um, as I mentioned, it's it's somewhere approximately uh, close to four. So so we see that uh, that uh, this uh, critical value is greater than the the uh, sorry test statistic is greater than the critical value. So therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis. So again. The thinking goes this, this way that if the if the test statistic is is greater than the critical value of the f distribution, we reject the null hypothesis and we conclude that the model as a whole is is jointly significant. Um, another way to look at this is also if you don't want to go to the statistical tables or Excel to get the critical value, we can also directly look at this. Uh, what is stated in Excel as significance f. So there is this very, very small number of uh, 1.7 times 10 to power minus 184. So this is like very, very small number. And uh, this significance is works like a p-value we have discussed earlier. So, so this is interpretation is exactly like that of p-value. So the significance f we compare to the, to the uh, significance level that we have used. So for example, 5% or 1%. So here the reasoning goes that if the significance of F is smaller than the significance level that we use. So for example, if this significance F is uh, less than 5%, we can, we can reject the null hypothesis at 5% significance level. So this also illustrates that we can, we can reject the null hypothesis at 5% level, also 1% or even 0.1% significance level. So this also indicates that uh, the that, uh, model as a whole is, is uh, statistically significant. So the F statistic uh, we want to have, if we want to uh, reject the null hypothesis, as usually in the case of significance level, we would want to have it. So we would like to see very large value of the F statistic, which is the test statistic, and, and low value of this uh, P value of the test. So the significance F is the P value of this F test. Okay. So finally, I mentioned that uh, that in the single regression case, this uh, F test actually boils down to testing just a single parameter. So, so we we would just need to test the hypothesis that if this uh, beta two is equal to zero, and we could also do it with a t test or p value. So it might be interesting to ask that okay, is F test then perhaps more powerful than the t test? Um, so I, for just for sake of curiosity. I, I find it interesting to note that, in fact, they, these two tests are completely equivalent. So there is uh, al always clear links between these, uh, these uh, different tests that we are, we are considering in this course. So, for example, this uh, 
F statistic, which we used as the test statistic previously, in the single regression case, it would be simply the squared value um, of the ratio of, uh, of, the, um, of this uh, estimated B coefficient and its standard error. So in other words, it is just the uh, squared value of the, of the T statistic that we used for the T test. And, uh, and uh, also, it's interesting to note that the F distribution, or at least the critical values of the F distribution, are directly the squared values of the of the critical t, t distribution. So so in that sense, these two tests would be completely equivalent, and uh, and indeed both both t distribution and f distribution are derived uh, from the from the normal distribution. So they are they are closely related. So. That sense, it might 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 appear that okay, what's the what's the importance of the F distribution or F F test? Uh, so of course, as I mentioned already, that in the single regression case, there is no additional value. It, the additional value came in this kind of uh, multiple multiple regression model when we have many regressors. But also, the same kind of approach can be utilized for testing testing hypotheses, and uh, and that will be the topic of the next lesson. So I will then next apply F test to, to testing some theoretical restrictions, which is of course relevant for the model specification purposes. So thanks for your attention and see you in the next video. Then.